So the underlying form or armature of this sculpture is a little display dress mannequin without arms and it was just a torso with no skirt. So it was on a stick. It was the kind of display mannequin you see in a jewelry store or something that has necklaces on it, not a full size human. So I covered that with fiberglass mesh to give it rigidity and then I sculpted styrofoam. So in a combination of a, it's a hot knife that's like a hot wire that slices through styrofoam and liquid nails and some fiberglass mesh and some galvanized nails to hold it all together, glued and shaped and scraped and carved this um, undulating skirt form. And so it's not very pretty when it's finished underneath, but then you cover it with a layer of mortar, which is like the same kind of adhesive they use to glue tiles and cement down together. So cover it so it's all rigid and then start gluing. And because I wanted this frilly lacy effect at the bottom, we flipped her over and started gluing these little C-spines in with epoxy. And it's a two-part epoxy that you knead together like a putty. And you can only work with that for about 20 minutes before it gets hard. So you have about 20 minutes to lay in a little patch with a tweezer, stuffing each one of these little teeth in. And these are called dentalia or C-spines. They're actually a little hollow seashell that's shaped like a horn or a tusk. And you find them all over the beach on the Pacific side. The Native Americans and um, Inuits used to use them to make jewelry, those um, neck pieces and things like that. They were very elaborate. If you break off the little pointy end, it becomes a hollow tube that you can thread. And so they made them into jewelry and, and things like that. So I buy them in the 10 pound lot. So I buy these giant bags of them, sort them by size, make sure none of them are broken, sort out the gray ones because I want it totally white and pristine. So. This whole part to fill in um, was about 10 pounds of sea spines and epoxy and added probably about two weeks to the project. So once I got all of those filled in, then I was able to start with the mosaic. And this poster is larger than life. She's not actually this big. But the mosaic is a combination of natural stone marble. Um, there are some little seashells you can see in here. And these seashells are probably the size of your fingernail, pretty small. This is a 24 karat gold glass that's made in Italy. And they, they take a regular piece of small tea glass, they lay a very, very thin veneer of gold on it, and then they put another thinner bubble of colored glass over that. And so that's what makes the gold seem like it's green or citrus or copper. It's the thinnest little transparent sheet of glass on the top that actually colors. And so all of those are hand cut down. And the theme of this piece, La Corrente, has to do with the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. When I was making this a few years ago, the oil spill was still going on and every day in my studio on the television I see news reports about this horrible tragic oil spill. My friend likes to go down to the Gulf Coast and vacation and go fishing and so it was sort of a tragedy that I was making this for a friend who so loves the Gulf Coast and goes down there all the time meanwhile the coast is being destroyed. And as I was researching the kind of sea life and plant matter that I wanted to incorporate into the mosaic, I started reading about these giant Asian sea kelp which are invading the Gulf of Mexico. So while man is destroying the Gulf and the ecosystem and the economy with man-made tools, this giant silent invader is coming into the Gulf Coast in the form of these Asian sea kelp and choking out all the other plants and sea life that's there. So we have a natural destructive force working in tandem with a man-made destructive force and the whole thing is it causes me a lot of anxiety, but I like to incorporate my concerns about the environment and social issues and things into my work because that gives it meaning for me. So this piece, although it's pristine and delicate and feminine, about a very ugly and scary thing that's going on. And, and that's what I like about making art is I can put the irony in it. I can make an, a statement as an artist, even though I'm somewhat powerless to do other things. But this one in particular, this La Corrente dress, really kind of went viral it, because it's so frilly and delicate and unexpected because it's raw materials like seashells, but it's done in a very feminine way. So um, I get the most kick and bang out of my buck for when I make sculptural pieces, and those are my works. My other works that are the client featuring ones are people's backsplashes, people's bathrooms, and they love those equally, but those aren't really public works. Those are private things for a specific individual, and they're made at that person's request for what they wanted as the theme. So one client came and said she collects roosters and she wanted a rooster on the backsplash of her kitchen. Now, 
I wouldn't really ever think of making a rooster sculpture or a rooster on my own work, but because that client wanted it, I made it and I was happy to make it because it was a fun challenge for me to do something new that I'd never done. Same thing with the fruit basket I'm working on right now. It's, it's a theme I've never thought to do on my own, but because a client wanted it, it's fun to stretch myself and try to do a design that the client will like and that suits her. Um, she and her husband collect a lot of blue bonnet paintings, and so I've incorporated blue bonnets into her fruit basket. So it's probably the only Italian mosaic style fruit basket you'll ever see that has Texas blue bonnets in it. So, so this is the this is the type of drawing that I present to my client. I do a sketch, a very detailed colored sketch, not always to scale, but just to give them an idea of what the piece will look mm -hmm. like. This is the point where they give me feedback saying, I want more pears, I don't want so many blue bonnets, I want it to be darker, lighter, bigger, smaller. And then I size the drawing up to whatever scale it needs to be. So we, we increase this drawing 50% at Kinko's, you know, and so now I have a black and white pattern that I work from. And all of these pieces are stuck to the drawing with a piece of clear contact paper. So they're not permanently adhered, but they're stuck enough so that they won't fall or slide around when I'm doing my work. And then I'll cover it with a sticky paper that has a water soluble glue. And then when I glue it in, I can, uh, once it's set in space, in the, in the space, I'll just dampen the paper and it peels right off. And then we can grout it. So this is a great medium to have in your kitchen because glass is uh, impermeable, it won't stain. If you sploogie spaghetti sauce on it, you can Windex it and wipe it and it'll, you can scrub mm -hmm. it with a scrubby. The color will never come off, it'll never fade, it'll never stain because the glass, the color goes all the way through the glass. So this client was worried about, but if you attach it to my stove, then if I move, I can't take it with me. <laughs> and when people say that, I always tell them, well, then you just call me and I'll make you a new one. Because by that time, you'll be tired of this one and you want something new anyway. So if you get a bigger house or a different house, I'll just make you something different. So.